you cut a little bit extra maybe you're wasting a little but that's okay now work carefully with this because take your time because this tends to cling to surfaces and all especially if you're in a dry environment where static is high so what you want to do is you want to align that with the leading edge of the blade make sure that you're at about one quarter inch from the trailing edge rather make sure you, you tape that make sure you put a little pressure nice and nice and clean you you don't want any creases on that and what you want to do is when you're done with that take the blade over and flip it over nice and clean one step and you should end up with a clean professional looking seal at the trailing edge any extra tape take your knife I use a brand new knife exacto knife and I take my time and trim that by shaving that off in this manner Next thing you want to do is you want to take the same tape and apply it to the trailing edges of the other two blades. In other words, repeat the same process. Once you're done with this, you're ready to add the packaging tape the top and at the bottom of the blade. This is just to hold the leading edge to the foam or to the Depron blade. Again, cut a little bit longer, cut about a half inch longer than the tape. So you want to take the packaging tape and align it with the edge or the trailing edge. Take your time and do this gently. Work from the center towards the ends. Do the Depron areas first before you do the plastic. And then press into the plastic part so that you don't end up with any creases or air pockets. Take your time, you should have a nice clean covered top surface. Once again, take your exacto blade and just trim these areas. Be careful when you're working with your exacto blades. This is a brand new sharp blade here that I'm using to do this type of cutting. You know, precision cutting. Okay, you want to repeat the same process with the top sections of the other two blades. Once again, you can do your trimming. Typically what I like to do is I like to work from the center and trim the excess tape towards the ends here. It makes it easier to do a clean line. There we go. Remove the excess. All right. So once you're done with the same process to the other two blades, you're ready to do the bottom. What you want to do is you want to repeat the same process at the bottom. Your packaging tape, cut a, bit, a little bit longer. Make sure that you take your time so the tape doesn't cling to surfaces or dirt or dust. Now, align the tape with the, lead, with the trailing edge. Just let it sit there. Gently iron on with your fingers, the Depron areas first, and then the plastic. Make sure there are no creases or air pockets. If you have an air pocket, you can say, simply take the, the point of your exacto blade and just poke a little hole there. And that's to re allow the air to escape as you press the uh, tape down.
And once that's done, take your plate again. Clean out the excess packaging tape. So, up with a very well covered plate and ready for, for use. I notice I didn't put any tape, I didn't go over the leading edges here because this tape, the packaging tape is thin enough that it clings to the surface and uh, in flight it would not lift. This is just uh, based on experience. I've done similar plates this way and it's held up quite nicely. This is the reason I'm sharing this process in this video in the same manner. Repeat the same process with the other two blades and once you're done, these blades are ready for mounting. They've been trimmed. As uh, I indicated in my earlier videos on, on how to reuse the blades when they're damaged. How do we reuse the blades when the tabs, the mounting tabs have been broken? Now this blade is, is usable with the Mia Microflight uh, rotor head uh, flex blades because it's got the, the hole already drilled. And if you watch those videos, I'll exp it explains how to drill that hole as well. So now you have a, three brand new blades. And if you have enough depth run, you don't have to worry about the blades breaking because you can follow the same procedure. And, uh, and it's a way of uh, having uh, instant blades almost. You don't have to wait for them when you place an order for some new ones. And they work, uh, These are the blades that we just completed assembling. And we can see once again the airfoil shape. It just follows the, leady, the plastic leading edge shape basically that's your Clark Y airfoil also notice there's a slide on their camber underneath the, the blade and that's just to give it a little more lift so basically these blades should perform quite well um, under a fan you know just to uh, test it in in house and also at the field should fly very nice we're about to test this complete rotor assembly what we want to see is if the rotor will spin on its own so simply using a, a fan, the fan I'm using is a 16 inch diameter fan and as we can see the rotor is beginning to spin. It's picking up speed nicely. And we've got that nice uh, sound that comes from the rotor blades spinning. If I try to pull this towards me, I can feel some tension on the, blade, on the rotor. It's trying to pull my hand away from the fan here. So I bring it closer to the fan to simulate uh, uh, what the uh, rotor would encounter under uh, power as, it's, uh, as, it, as it is uh, moving through the air. You can see that there's, there's some lift there. It's basically that's what we're looking for so you want to be able to feel the lift on the rotor head typically this is the way I test most of the, the rotor head blades that I make just to make sure that they are providing the uh, correct lift okay so it's giving me the, the right amount of tension there I can feel the rotor wanting to lift up out of my hand and that's because it's got the airfoil without the airfoil you're not going to be able to to get the blades to uh, spin fast enough and efficient enough for it to provide lift. And basically the airfoil is due to that little center part that we added to the blades. It's got the curvature, it's got a Clark Y airfoil, and in addition you can slightly put a slight bend on the trailing edge of the blades, make sure that it's done even, just to give it a little bit more lift. It's not required but I'm just doing this for the sake of this uh, video and you shouldn't even have to spin it manually uh, start it the blades should get going on their own and as the auto gyro is moving across the, the ground it will eventually start to pick up lift and you can see how easy this is uh, spinning and it's spinning pretty fast in a matter of no time it's an indication of an efficient rotor head It's picking up nicely. Blades are spinning nicely.
Oh yeah. The airfoil is working. It's picking up nice and smooth. <laughs> 